along. There's another cupboard space with a um, place for your uh, food and stuff. None perishable. A few tea towels. Clock there if you want an alarm clock to get up in the morning. And odds and sods. Like the aforementioned uh, toilet rolls. Bit of cling film and uh, foil. Contain a few eggs so they don't get broke. Uh, a couple of plastic wine glasses. And underneath that, more dreaded toilet rolls. The next couple along is the wardrobe. Well, I don't actually use it as a wardrobe. It's got a couple of bottles in there for your washing out your toilet. So that because sometimes if you go to a place that's just an ordinary toilet, you can't get the uh, toilet itself under the tap sink. So just use a bottle of some kind. Um, this I just use to carry stuff if I'm on a campsite when you want to go and do your washing up. Save you save washing up in the van. Underneath that, there are some. Um, curtain type things that uh, are used for blanking out the windows. I don't actually use them because I use the curtains, but um, certainly if it was cold, that would be the way to go. Yet another cupboard over top the bed. That's got the user, user manual in it. Um, travel, scrabble, the fire blankets in there. A uh, couple of books to do with the camper places to stop and it's also got a mallet for putting up the awning. While we're on cupboards, this top one on the right hand side above the um, above the driver's seat has got all your crockery in. Plates, cups, everything you could possibly want. Next to that is a bit more storage in the cupboard and uh, this black thing I use for if you're somewhere where you can't just let the water drain from the sink it will just go straight onto the road or if you're on a campsite you really don't want it going straight down on the grass and uh, alienate the person next to you so this goes where the sink is underneath the van there's a drain pipe there where it comes out that goes straight in the top of there and that has solved the problem. Various bits and bobs in what I call the loft. Some car spares just in case the RAC have to come out to you. The spares are already here. We hope that don't happen, but you never know. Also stuffed in the corner there is a first aid kit, which we hope you don't need. Up uh, over top the seats there in this storage area there's uh, an awning which the instructions are sewn into the bag that it comes in and behind that there's four fold up seats which you can sit outside and have a bit of grub or whatever and now we do a quick demo of how the bed works lift it up and pull this bit out Unclip the backing, put that out of the way for a minute, and the bottom part, find a home for that somewhere. Unclip these two uh, bolts, lift slightly, pull forward, and then the bedding just lays as so, one bed. This parcel shelf comes out very easily. Unfortunately, there is no storage space for it, so I just put it between the seats out the way. That can lift out so you can sleep with your head near the back if you wish. And underneath, table to go with the four chairs which are above us. And there it is, back to, as a traveling uh, arrangement. Uh, at night time, for complete privacy, curtains pull all the way round, all the windows, like so.
there are two keys that uh, are used for the van. The longer one is ignition and all the locks and the shorter one works the petrol uh, filler cap. This little red key is for using when uh, the bikes are on the back for a, a strap and that's it. Should you lose the key phone me immediately and I will arrange or let you know how to get in the van without using a key. Well obviously I can't tell you that unless you have an emergency. Underneath the uh, rear seat there's a few bits and pieces. There's um, some chocks to put under the wheels to make it level and then you have your uh, 240 volt lead in there. And there's this big chrome pole in there which sits in the hole in the floor. And then behind the driver's seat is a table. Which sits on top of the chrome pole so you can have your meal. This is the last part of the tour, but probably the most important part. I would like you to check the oil and water every day. Very easy to do. Grab the back flap by the number plate and pull. Straight away, you can see the water level. It should be on maximum, or certainly between minimum and maximum. If it isn't, it needs some. Next to that is the place to put oil in, should it need any. And in between the oil filler and the bottle is the oil dipstick. Just check that to make sure it's um, hopefully on maximum, but certainly not any less than minimum. It should be somewhere between the two. If it's on minimum, put half a litre in it, just top it up. So there you have it. Hopefully that's about it for the tour. All you need now is grab your bedding, get in it, drive it, go where you want, enjoy and see you in a few days.